In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to synchronize an audio track with lighting using a MIDI sequence file. Now, this is my preferred way of doing things. Um, I know some people will use a program like Ableton to run both their audio tracks and their lighting effects using MIDI, but I prefer using a queuing program like SFX7 or CSC Show Control just because I can set this all up and I know that uh, if a person's running it with me, all they simply have to do is keep hitting the go command every time they have a cue. They don't have to worry about clicking around to different areas on the screen. So before we get started, let me just give credit here. The uh, audio track that I'm using is uh, Heroic. It's by uh, Alex Productions and their uh, web address is https colon backslash, backslash onsound.eu backslash. And you can find this track at freestockmusic.com. I was looking for something with uh, some definite musical hit points where I could uh, synchronize lighting to that. The other thing that I'm doing here for MIDI input, and you can use any device for MIDI input. It can be any kind of controller that's basically going to put out MIDI note information. I'm going to use a Behringer a CMG Touch TC64. It's an older controller that I have. And uh, I'm going to be using uh, the C3 note here, and then I'm also going to be using C some C4 notes in here. Right. So let's bring this back up. The other thing that you'll need to do this is you're going to need some kind of a DAW program. So there's many out there. There's Ableton. There's uh, Presonus Studio. Um, in this case, I'm using Waveform Free, and I'll put the link down below in the description. Um, this is made by Traction, and it's a free DAW. And it works very well because basically all we want it for is to uh, lay down our audio track and then synchronize some MIDI note on and off cues along with that audio track. So if you take a look here, I actually did some, but I'll do a short demo for you on here. And I'll start a new track in here, new track four. As an input, I'm using my CMD touch. And just so you can hear this now, I would be able to input notes. And if you notice, I'll watch down the keyboard here. When I hit some buttons, you'll see some notes being input down there. Interestingly enough, too, this is something you may have a keep tabs on. I'm actually pressing the C3 key on my CMD touch, but if you notice, it's lighting up C4. You will get that one octave discrepancy sometimes with different programs, and you have to kind of like be aware of that, that even though it says I'm doing C3 on my CMD touch, it says for this program, I'm actually putting out a C4 message. There's a little discrepancy between certain programs, and you might find that it might be one octave off. Anyway, here we go. CMD Touch. I'm going to put in a sound here so we can actually hear this. And I'll use my grand piano sound, which sounds like that, and I can test that. So you can hear that. And then it's simply as easy as... Uh, setting this to record mode, I'm going to start back here, and setting this to record mode, and I'm going to hit my R key, and it's going to play this audio track, and then all I have to do is punch that button every time I want a light cue to happen. So let's see if we can make this work for us here. Okay, and we'll stop there. So you see we've input some MIDI information. Now, with the MIDI, you'll notice that I may have not been totally accurate, but what I've done in the program, and I'll just rewind to the beginning here, is set it that it will automatically quantize this to the beat. If you, you know, you do have to do a little bit of investigating and learn how to run your MIDI program or your DAW program. And that's what I've done here. So I'm doing a little bit of quantizing and now I'm doing a little bit of adjusting for note length 
going through here and adjusting some note length. And you can do this universally through some editing if you'd like to do that. Um, but it's quantized this so everything starts right on the beat. Um, and I have it in snap mode right now. So again, just have to learn a little bit about your program so that you can actually go ahead and line everything up so it does. The nice thing about doing it this way is that you can slide things around a little bit and make them match. So let's just hear our end result here now that we got this done. Again, so the nice idea about this is that you can go in and then move MIDI events around a little bit. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details, but whatever DAW that you're using, they, they do allow you to do this. Then all I'm going to do is then render this out to a file where it can be saved. And again, different DAW programs work in different ways, but render just this MIDI file out. So I can then use that in my um, queuing program. I'm going to do this two different ways too here. And what I've done, just to give you two di different examples, uh, this MIDI track here, I'm going to use to control a Q structure in uh, QLC+. Plus. So I only have to send the same note on and off because I'm basically going next Q, next Q, next Q. And then this MIDI track here, I'm going to use to actually control buttons. So I'm actually, in this MIDI track, I'm actually using different notes. So you can see there's different pitches that I've been using because I'm going to control a couple different buttons and uh, when I use that track. All right, so basically create it, line everything up, then render just out these MIDI tracks so that you can use them in your queuing program. Okay, so now you can see that I have my QLC Plus file up over here and I have my SFX 6.7 over here, which is my queuing program that I'm going to use to queue. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is go over here to QLC Plus, and the first example here I'm going to do is for a queue list. So I want to go to my inputs and outputs, and I'm going to select as an input my Behringer CMD Touch. All right, then go back to my virtual console, uh, double click on here, and my next queue command, I'm going to tell it to listen, auto detect, and I'll hit my C3 key on my Behringer CMD Touch. Okay, so it's registered that, and I click OK. So now every time that I hit that C3 key, and we could actually watch that happen, I'll start this. Every time I hit the C3 key, it will advance in a queue. And you can see that happening. Now, if you remember, the C3 was the examples that we were sending. We put them into the MIDI sequence. So I'm going to stop this. Now I'm going to go back over and say, okay, we're not going to be inputting from the CMD touch. We're going to do the loop B MIDI. So now I'm going to be sending that C3 command from here over to there. So we're going to use that internal, that loop B internal MIDI connection to do that. And uh, again, I'll include a link to that program too, to, so that you can make that work for you. All right, I've got my SFX, my queuing program up here. One thing I'll need to make sure that I do is go into the program properties, production properties. I've already set up my audio patch, but I need to set up my MIDI patch. Create a new MIDI patch, and I'm going to select here. It's going to be loop B internal MIDI, and make sure I click active, and then OK. So I do have a MIDI uh, connection there now. Um, OK, so I'm going to put my soundtrack in here, drop that in, and I'm just going to pick that uh, heroic from my desktop here. A recommendation here, since we're working with a Windows PC, I always like to use WAVE programs. And I will mention a little disclaimer here. I'm having a little trouble with this one. It has a little bit of lead in, and sometimes it doesn't play that. But uh, you get the idea. All right, so the WAVE program's in there. If I play that back, you can hear that. Okay, I'll just stop that. There is a little bit of a dead time at the beginning of that, a little bit of silence before the program actually comes in. Now, I'm going to put my MIDI sequence in here. And so we'll drop the MIDI sequence in there. And then I have to go for track here and load up with that sequence. So I did two different ones. I'm going to do my first one here, which is just that C note being played over and over and over. Now, don't forget, it says track two, recording one. That's, that was my export from my DAW that I put in. 
make sure that you click over here on output and give this an output MIDI out one or else it has nowhere to go. So now we have that. Now in order to link the two together I'm going to take this wait command and drop it in here. And then it, it defaults at a wait time of about five seconds. I'm just going to put this at one second. So basically our sound file will fire here and then it'll wait one second and it'll start the MIDI sequence as, as though I'm pressing that C3 key. Now th there may be some timing issues between the two. So that's we use the wait command to fix any timing issues that we may have between the audio and between the MIDI sequencer. So let's just see what happens here. I'm going to start run over here, get this one started, and we'll see if the cues change on time. Okay, look like that one changed on time and the audio didn't line up. Okay. Okay, so it's kind of a short example, but you get the idea then. Everything is lining right up. If it didn't quite line up, I could adjust my wait time shorter or longer to try to make sure that everything lines up so my MIDI sequence is lining up with my audio cues. All right, let's take a look at another example here. So say I'm not using cues, and I'll just hit stop and get out of this. Let's say that I'm using the buttons. So I can do the same thing here. I can go in, double click a button, what I would do is to go back to my CMD touch and I've actually already done this and double click a, bu a button auto detect play my C4 and say okay auto detect play my C sharp 4 note and so so I've actually done that so these are actually connected so if I use my CMD touch now and play some of these notes you can see that it activates these different buttons on there C4, C sharp, D, D sharp, and etc. So that is working. Now we want to go back again and change this now to loop B because now we're going to be sending those commands over here. We've got to change the sequence this time. So I'm going to take out this sequence here, delete that, and we'll put in this other sequence. and find the track for that which is my other sequence. This is the one with the different notes in it so I'm going to be using this to activate buttons. Don't forget you're going to need to do output down here and do MIDI output fit MIDI output one. All right we still have the one second time here. Let's see if this one lines up. It may or may not. Um, so we'll go back here. We'll go to virtual console buttons. We'll go into run mode and start. Let's see what happens. A little bit late. A little bit late. A little bit late. All right, so let me stop this. So let's fix that. We go into the wait command and instead of one second, I'm just going to type in 0 0.800. Make it eight, eight tenths of a second. Let's see if this lines up a little bit better. Again, sorry about the audio. I don't know why it doesn't click right in. Much better. Things are lining up. Okay, so you get the idea then. And I like to do it this way because sometimes I'm doing middle school shows where I may have 25 different audio tracks. It might be like an hour and a half performance and I have all 25 different tracks. And rather than having a whole bunch of MIDI cues up here, I can simply do a sequence. So you've got to take the time, yeah, with the DAW to put in the MIDI notes and like line everything up. But then you can pull it into a cue structure like this. And the nice thing about this, now that I have it in here, everything is encapsulated in one. If I click this, that it's it's in there the MIDI sequence is part of that cue but I don't have to think about it so I can actually have a student just sit here and run this for me and just click go and I can be satisfied that everything's going to line up
Meanwhile, I may be over there managing the audio mixer, and that's why there's not much of an issue with this. It's going to be already synchronized, and it should stay together pretty much. You don't have to fool around with it too much. All right, hopefully you find this uh, helpful. I'll put links to the various programs down below. So I'm using uh, the uh, waveform free uh, for the DAW to get the, create the MIDI sequence and export it. Of course, we're using QLC+, and I'm using SFX 6.7 um, to create my audio cues in and uh, bring in my MIDI sequences to make everything line up.